from Television City in Hollywood, it's the Mary Tyler Moore Hour, starring Bonnie Franklin with Henny Youngman. German because you had a crush on Wolfgang Mueller. <laughs> oh, yeah. I passed German, but I flunked Wolfgang. Yeah. <laughs> oh, now listen to this. Hairline. Come in. Ah, good in modern hair, Christy. <laughs> hey, Sukiyaki to you, too. <laughs> hey, uh, sir. Here you keep your car. Thanks a lot for letting me use it last night. I really appreciate oh, it. Oh, it's okay. Well, damn, Mary, my date was really impressed when she saw your monogram luggage. When she saw M.M., she thought I worked for Mork and Mindy. <laughs> Penny, my luggage is in my trunk. Please. Yeah. We'd, uh, we'd open up your trunk to get the tire jack out. The jack? Oh, do you, you have a flat tire? No. No, you're not flat. What then? We needed the, the uh, tire jack to, you know, pry your car loose. From what? From the dinghy. The dinghy? Yeah, the dinghy was uh, attached to the sailboat. Sailboat? You didn't ask me that. Okay, let me try and cut through this now for you. Ready? Yeah. A guy's car breaks down. Uh -huh. Okay. He says, hey, Bob, can you give me a push? I say, sure. I repeat, sailboat? The sailboat was attached to the guy's trailer that was behind the guy's car. And? Man, I couldn't just leave the guy stranded there. I mean, it's the law of the sea. <laughs> Yeah, what's good about it? We've got that German buyer coming. We've got the tightest schedule we've ever had. And to top it off, our guest star, Bonnie Franklin, who was supposed to be taping her number, right now, isn't here yet. Well, that's not like Bonnie to be late. Yeah, and I hope she didn't have trouble on the freeway. Yeah, you can never tell. There are a lot of nuts on the road. <laughs> well, you know, I'm kind of worried about it. Yeah. You know, I better go out and look for her. Harry, loan me the keys to your uh, Maserati, would you? <laughs> I'm not that worried. <laughs> There's a real nice thing going on in cities everywhere. A lot of city folk are turning into weekend farmers. They feel the way to get back to simple basic foods is to grow it themselves. If they could grow their own cereal, it would probably be grape nuts. It sure is simple. Just crunchy little nuggets of wheat and barley with no preservatives. If the idea of simple foods is growing on you, start breakfast with Post Grape Nuts, the simple cereal. Maxwell House is coffee you can count on. Maxwell House, good to the last drop. Maxwell House is good every time. Maxwell House is good morning. Good to the last 
ADC brand from Maxwell House, specially blended and ground for new coffee makers. A perfect taste and always good to the last drop. Maxwell House is good morning. Good to the last drop. Maxwell House. In this world of the ordinary, there is a remarkable nasal spray that lasts and lasts up to 12 continuous hours. Duration. Duration nasal spray relieves up to 12 continuous hours. Duration relieves nasal stuffiness and sinus congestion. So just one use lets you work all day. Just one use lets you sleep all night. Duration relieves up to 12 continuous hours. Duration with the longest lasting nasal decongestant. And tell them I want to pick up the dances on camera three. I tell them myself, but right now, I've got a very temperamental costume designer to deal with. Okay, Eric. Maurice. Harry. Estelle said you wanted to talk to me. I need a costume decision. <laughs> now, at Mother Goose number, it's Mary and Bonnie Franklin as Red Riding Hood and Bo Peep, right? Right. All right. Now, under Red Riding Hood outfit, exactly what kind of red do you want? We could do scarlet. We could do vermilion. <laughs> vermilion. Vermilion. Thank you. What fabric should I use on the bodice? I could give you a pot de soie or a crepe de chine. Oh, Maurice, <laughs> you're the designer. You make the decision. Okay. Pot de soie. Crepe de chine. <laughs> For doses. <laughs> Gotta do everything myself. On Technugan, we're a Zumach. 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 Mary, are you all right? Is Bonnie here yet? No. I think it's Bermuda Triangle time. I mean, we called her house, no answer. We checked one day at a time. She's not there. All right, Harry, calm down. Calm down. We've got musicians waiting. We've got dancers waiting. We've got a spotlight. Nobody to shine on. All right, no time to calm down. Penny, talking about, I heard you talking about dancing. My doctor's a dancer, you know. I went to my doctor yesterday. I wasn't feeling too good. He says, get undressed. I said, take me out a few times first. <laughs> I'm standing there in the nude. He said, go over the window. Stick your tongue out the window. I said, for what? He said, I'm mad at my neighbor. Hiya, <laughs> oh, yeah, darling. Henny, I'm glad you're here. Here? Did you hear the one about the two psychiatrists? Henny, uh, please. Uh, not now. I got a lot of problems. Talking about problems, you hear the others only about two Eddie, psychiatrists? Look, uh, our show's running a little long. We're going to have to cut your act from five minutes to three minutes. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? That means they only can do 45 jokes. <laughs> Take my two minutes, please. I think Jan Murray did, Mr. Pearl did, Red Buttons did. Before he had How come you're not laughing? I'm the producer of a comedy show. I don't have time to laugh. <laughs> Ooh, he wouldn't let me through again. I had to yell at the guard at the gate. Hi. Why is it? At all the other studios, they say, Hello, Miss Franklin, you know where to park. Or, Hi, Bonnie, what song are you going to sing? Here, it's What's Your Name. It makes you wonder, you know? Hi. <laughs> hi. Hi, Mary. You okay? Oh, no, yeah, I'm sorry I'm late. I'm fine. No, I am not fine. I am so angry at my bank. Oh, the bank. And I thought you wouldn't have a good excuse. Ah, uh, they messed up on my deposits again. My checks have been bouncing all week long. I had to go in there this morning and straighten them out. I mean, how would you feel if the Humane Society called you and told you that your donation bounced? <laughs> Terrible. Right? Bonnie, we were worried. You should have called. And Another thing, the phone company, I'm having a battle with them, too. You're a toll call, and I just wouldn't give them the satisfaction. Last week, I dialed the wrong number. When I called to report it, they charged me for the call. Boy, you really stand up for your rights, don't you? Yeah, well, my father told me it is the principle of the thing. You cannot let big institutions push you around. Yeah, and you sure don't. I mean, today alone, you have fought with the network security force, the phone company, and the bank. Don't forget the fight with me. No, I, I didn't have a fight with you. But you're going to, unless you get into costume and tape that number with Tony. Yeah, now, okay, come on, Bonnie, right, we're running way behind. Now, come on, come on, go, 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 go. Don't push me, Harry. <laughs> Boy, I wish I were more like her, you know? I mean, when she speaks, people really listen, you know what I mean? Oh, I'm sorry, Mary, did you say uh, something she, I wasn't Yeah. <laughs> Retaping Bonnie Franklin with Tony Stevens. I won't dance, take one. Dad. 
that you're charming and you're gentle. Especially when you do the continental. But this feeling isn't purely mental. I always wanted to be a pioneer that came across the United States in a covered wagon. When I got into auto mechanics, I just realized I was pioneering a field that not too many women were in. Ann Duncan, visiting service instructor. This is who we are and what we do at General Motors. Most of my towns that I go to are really small. I'll get into a dealership and then I'll work with each mechanic and then ask them what their problems are. And if they do have problems, um, I try to help them out. We're working all the time to improve the service departments, you know, all the way across the United States. General Motors has established this training program so that we can train the mechanics in the dealerships where they're working to help them do a better job for the customer. And I really enjoy it. I love it. General Motors. People building transportation to serve people. When I'm constipated, I want relief I can depend on overnight. Philip is a true blue friend. My laxative should work overnight, too, and be gentle. Philip's is a true blue friend. Philip's Milk of Magnesia Liquid works with your body as you sleep, using your body's water to lubricate and soften. Next morning, most people get gentle, effective relief. Philip's is a true blue friend. Philip's, available in fresh-tasting mint. America's true blue friend. Follow the yellow brick road to the land of Oz. Bring me the broomstick of the witch of the west. Die! Share the adventure, the magic, and the fun of one of the world's most delightful films. The Wizard of Oz, starring Judy Garland, Friday at 8, 7 Central and Mountain. Oh, just the perfect length. I don't know, Maurice. You think it's maybe a little too short? Nah, nah, it's perfect. Hey, any longer, and old wolf's gonna chase after you. Ah. <laughs> Come in. <laughs> oh. Ta-da! Sophisticated stuff.
store of the theater and the tube. <laughs> Great Bo Peep outfit. Oh, thank you. Oh, Mary, can I have your legs? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, that bonnet frames your face real nice. Ah, uh, thank Look, um, about this staff. The staff is props. I'm costumes. <laughs> Come in. Getting close to showtime, ladies. Hey, Clarice, the costumes are perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Check with any young man. I want to know what he's wearing in the monologue. He says he's wearing his blue suit. Uh, well, he brought a couple of ties. Why don't you go down and pick out the right one for him? I asked Henny about that already. I said to him, how long are you wearing that tie? He said, about down a year. <laughs> I mean, the guy never gives me a straight answer. I'll see you, ladies, but perfect. You look exquisite. Oh, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> That is not your typical costume designer. Where'd you find him? Maurice? Yeah. He's an ex-fighter. He used to design his own trunks. <laughs> True. Hey, Mary, how's that welcoming speech coming? Oh, uh, pretty good, I think. Um, okay. Okay, okay. Um, okay. Act design, Fig Nugan. Era of the Kanshaft, Zumachen. Uh, wait, no, popcorn. Zumachen. Vera <laughs> Allah off, Deezer Show, Heisen Sie willkommen. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Yeah, it did sound good, but I understand German. Oh, Mary, you are really a card. You know what she said? She said, Herr Schimmel, you are really a very nice man, but you have oatmeal in your nose. <laughs> <laughs> I did not. I said, it's a pleasure to meet you, and all of us on the show welcome you. Good, because we're trying to sell the show to Germany, and you know what that means. Right. Mucho dinero, huh? <laughs> now, listen. We've got to start the show at 7 on the dot. Schimmel has to leave at 8 to catch a plane back to Berlin. I want him to see the whole show. Yeah, but Harry, makeup takes a half hour. That only, what, gives us a half hour to eat. Yeah, right, and the commissary is closed, and I'm hungry. Okay, look, look. Here's $10. Go to the place across the street. Well, but look, we're dressed very funny. That's all right. I'll give you a coat. Go into a restaurant. All right. right. You've got to eat fast. Right. And chew later, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Harry. Bye. Bye. Oh. Oh, yeah, right. I hope they don't keep us waiting long. Yeah. Pardon me, ladies. Officer Crane and myself observe you committing infraction 21954 ABC of the traffic code. <laughs> That's impossible. We weren't even driving. We were walking. Right. You call it walking. The law calls it jaywalking. Jaywalking? Sorry, ma'am. I'm going to have to cite you. Oh, jaywalking. Mm, I'm so ashamed. <laughs> the first time I ever got a ticket. <laughs> You're both virgins. It's his first time, too. <laughs> There are murderers and there are rapists out on the streets. Why don't you go get them, huh? I would if they were jaywalking. Now, may I see some identification? Oh, sure. Mary, do you have identification? I think I left mine in the basket that I was taking to grandmother's house. <laughs> I'll just go to the studio across the street, get it, and I'll be right back. All right there, lady. What's your name? Oh, officer. She is Mary McKinnon. I'm Bonnie Franklin. Uh, you... You're Bonnie Franklin? Yeah. <laughs> You're not really Mary McKinnon, are you? Yeah, I am. Eh? <laughs> what a funny hat. Well, we're doing a show across the street. Franklin and McKinnon, huh? Right. Okay, keep an eye on him. I'll check with the office. The office? Yeah, he means headquarters. He thinks that the office sounds more businesslike. <laughs> it's the <it's a> new breed. <laughs> Listen, uh, why does he have to call? Uh, just procedure, uh, uh, to see if you're wanted anywhere. Well, that's silly, though. I mean, he knows who we are. We just told him. Officer, we have to eat quickly and get back and do a show. Couldn't you just give us the ticket? I'm sorry, it's procedure. <laughs> He's a rookie, and I got to teach him procedure. 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 Okay. <laughs> if it were procedure to arrest your own grandmother, would you do that? Uh... I, I wouldn't, uh, but he would. <laughs> Look, I, I, I'm really sorry, ladies, but uh, while we're waiting here, I, I, I was just wondering, uh, could I uh, 
Can I ask you for your autograph for, uh, for, for my wife? She'll, she'll, she'll be so proud when I tell her I busted you. Mr. McKen? Yes. You own a green Mustang license plate C U T E G A L? Yes, I do. Cute gal. It was a gift. Not <laughs> standing more parking within 15 feet of a fire hydrant. I'm afraid you have to come downtown. No, that's impossible. I never had a ticket in my life. Well, of course, you know, I've gotten away with a few things, but no, I never. The citation was issued July 4th of last year, and bail has not been posted. Okay, there you are. July 4th, I was not even in the country. I was in Canada. And I lent my car to one of the network pages, Kenneth Christie, and he got a ticket and didn't pay it. And you're under arrest. <laughs> what? Arrest? Come on! You can't arrest somebody for an unpaid parking ticket. Oh, no. He can, Miss Franklin. This is the law. Uh, could you sign that autograph? Uh, uh, to Marilyn, a great little wife. I'm going to have to go to jail? No, no, of course not. Night court. <laughs> Mary is going. I'm going to go with her. Lady, a police cruiser isn't a taxi cab. <laughs> uh, if I were under arrest, then would you take me? Oh, he'd be thrilled. Ah, <laughs> uh, listen, uh, I'll give you ten bucks if you let my friend go. I can't do that. Hello, Miss, uh, that was attempted bribery. You can arrest her. You're under arrest. <laughs> Thanks. No sweat. Yeah. Do you realize what you are doing? Mary, I am doing what I have to do. We will fight this with every fiber of our being. Nobody can tell us what to do. Get into the car. So much for nobody can tell us what to do. <laughs> No, I'd not. Would you do that? <laughs> some bad news for you. Some really bad news. If you laughed at the movie, you'll roar at the new comedy series, The Bad News Bears. What happens when a reluctant coach inherits an all-boys baseball team? How are you going to make a team with these losers? I would look if I whacked them. And adds the female pitching sensation of the century? It's bad news. Jack Wharton stars in The Bad News Bears. Rated hilarious and premiering Saturday at 8, 7 Central and Mountain, followed by Billy. This is CBS. Have a nice trip, Mrs. Green. Well, just one more thing, Kelly. If I pay extra, could you put a little meat into Trixie's food now and then? Don't worry. All our dogs get full course. Full what? New Gang's full course dry dog food with real meat. It's hard, like my dry dog food. Feel the red ones. They're soft. And they're made with real meat. Look, she loves it. Usually do. <laughs> Nourishing, tasty, full course. It's what dogs need and love, all in one bag. KCMO TV, Kansas City, Missouri. crimes or less. <laughs> I'll talk to them about that. Sit down, ladies. Hey. hey. Hey, don't worry. I'll see what I can do about getting your case called early, seeing as how you have to tape your TV show. I, I always thought it was a live TV show. No, sorry to disappoint you. Ed Sullivan was always live, wasn't he? Yes. Oh, you never knew what was going to happen on his show. No. Remember the bear? The bear when he came out of the yes, audience? Yes, yes, I remember. Yeah, and, and those tumblers when they got caught. Look, officer, our show 
is not live. It's taped. But if I don't get to a phone to let my producer know where we are, we will be neither live nor on tape because there will be no show. I am entitled to a phone call, am oh, I? Oh, of course. As many as you like. The phone's right over there. Thank you. Come on, lady. You're back in the line. <laughs> I want you to tell Harry that we are the innocent victims of circumstance, prisoners of bureaucratic ineptitude. I'm sure that will make him feel much better. <laughs> uh, Officer Crane, I want you to know that Miss McKinnon and I have no intention of paying this ticket or any other ticket that we didn't get. You know, that's up to the judge, Miss Franklin. Ms. Franklin, Ms. <laughs> and another thing, is Linus really going to file charges? Oh, oh, he's a rookie, but this is good practice for him. Yeah, but I'm really up for a serious charge. Oh, don't worry. I'll testify at your trial. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Wait a minute. Trial? Hey, please. Take a look at this. <laughs> Beautiful, huh? Brooks Brothers, 400 bucks. I shoplifted it. <laughs> hey, yes, look, uh, this is Harry Sinclair, the producer of The Mary McKinnon Show. Look. Have you seen Miss McKinnon or Bonnie Franklin? You saw them leave about an hour ago, and they haven't come back yet. Thank you very much. Harry, I've checked everywhere. The restaurant across the street, the ladies' room, nothing. I hope nothing's happened to them. So do I, because when they get back, I want to kill them personally. Well, I'm going to call Mary's house. Maybe Ruby knows something. Harry. Hey, Harry. Uh, <clears throat> this is uh, Mr. Sinclair. Mr. Sinclair, this is Herr Schimmel from the German TV network, and I am uh, Otto Fruch, his interpreter. Oh, it's very nice to see you. Would you uh, please tell Mr. Schimmel that we are really pleased to have him here? If there's anything we can do, don't hesitate to ask. Herr Schimmel, thank you for your hospitality, and says it's a pleasure to be in your country. And no, he can't get you a deal on a Volkswagen. Ah. Thanks. Yeah, I can see why you guys lost the two big ones. Kenny, go help Irish. I, I don't think Irish needs any help right now. Or she could... Rouse! <laughs> uh, Mr. Krug, uh, Mr. Schimmel, you'll be able to watch the show on this television set here. Please make yourselves comfortable. We'll start in a minute. Henny, uh, can you come over here, please? What's up? Henny, I'd like you to meet Mr. Krug. How are you, sir? And Mr. Schimmel. Point me, sir. <laughs> Mr. Schimmel just flew in from Germany. I guess your arms are pretty tired, huh? Henny, <laughs> Henny, we're still waiting for Bonnie and Mary to get back. Would you go out and warm up the audience? Hey, please? if I go on now, before the show, I'll be so funny, I'll never be able to follow myself. Remember, I'm a legend in my own mind. Henny, do the warm up, please. Oh, no regard, thank you. Sorry, I spoke to Ruby. She doesn't know anything either. I think we better call the police. Yeah, I'll go check the hospital. Hospitals? You don't think they're hers? Oh, no, no. It's probably something very minor, you know, a sprained ankle, a cut finger, an abrasion or something like that. Really, I uh, wouldn't worry about it. I'll check the morgue, too. <laughs> celebration for me, ladies and gentlemen. This week, you're looking at a guy who's been married for 50 years to the same woman. 50 years, this week. <laughs> Where have I failed? That's not the case <laughs> I take my wife everywhere, but she finds her way home. <laughs> 50 years in love with one woman. My wife finds out she killed me. <laughs> We went back to Chicago, went to the same hotel where we got buried. Had the same suite of rooms. Only this time I went in the bathroom and cried. <laughs> People ask, how did it last so long? Here's the secret. My wife and I go to a lovely restaurant twice a week. A little candlelight, a little wine. She goes Tuesdays, I go Friday. <laughs> Darling, where do you want to go for your vacation? Where do you want to go for vacations? I want to go somewhere I've never been before. I said, try the kitchen. <laughs> she hates housework. I bought electric iron, electric dishwasher, electric fryer. She said, too many got us around. She had no place to sit down. What did I do? Bought her electric chair. <laughs> I 
got a wonderful family. I, could, I have a grandson, Larry, 22 years old. He'll be 23 if I let him. <laughs> he complains about headaches, headaches. I've told him a thousand times when you get out of bed at feet first. Not to get to the moment so that the is. <laughs> I said I played a great horse the other day. Took seven horses to beat him. <laughs> I have five brother-in-law. One brother-in-law a genius. When we had the garbage strike in New York, you know how I got rid of his garbage? He gift-wrapped it, left it in the car, I stole it. <laughs> I love this crowd today. <laughs> Second brother-in-law a nitty. We had a blackout in New York. He was stuck on an escalator for four hours. <laughs> he said, why did you walk down? He said, I was on my way up. He said, I'm obviously going to the guy who's on top of my knees. He the psychiatrist. He says, look, I find it tough to make friends. What am I going to do about it? You got to help me, Doc, you fat slob. <laughs> Another fellow goes to a psychiatrist. He says, what do you do for a living? He says, I'm an auto mechanic. He's getting under the couch. <laughs> Fifty years, folks. My wife went to the beauty parlor for two hours. That was just for the estimate. <laughs> she got a mud pack for two days. She looked nice. <laughs> and the mud fell off. <laughs> she ran after the garbage man. Am I too late for the garbage? She said, no, jump in. <laughs> sitting in a bar room having a little drink, you know. And there's a man over here sitting in a bar. He falls down three, sitting on the stool, falls down three times. I pick him up, I put him back in the stool. Bartender, where does this man live? I'll give him a lift home. I have my car. He tells me where the man lives. I, I, I take him outside, I put him in the car, he falls in the back seat. I get to the address, I pick him up, pull him out, he falls down three times on the way to the house. I knock on the door. Mrs. Spicell, I brought your husband home. She says, where's the wheelchair? <laughs> Pardon me, but could I get in front of you? I'm, I'm sorry to ask, but it's really very, very important. No. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Bill? Bill Jackson? <laughs> I'm sorry, you might be mistaken, I'm not Bill Jackson. Oh, hey, Bill, now that's a good outfit. You know, it's much smarter than that dress you wore at Don and Gary's wedding. You must be mistaken. If you're not busy after night court, want to have a drink with me? What are you, sick? Hey, aren't you on TV? Yeah, you're Mary McKinnon. Uh, no, I'm... I'm Bill Jackson. <laughs> Francine? Louie here. Uh, look, honey, I'm going to be a little late for supper. Oh, I'd say from, uh, 20 to 30 years. <laughs> Pardon me. Hmm. Could I borrow a dime? Do you have a dime? Uh, no. No, but, but I've got uh, a $300 bill. Whose picture is that? Rich Little. Who else would be on a $300 bill? Yes, yes, of course. I really need a dime. Look, lady, there's no money in counterfeit dimes. Bonnie! Yes? Bonnie, uh... I need a dime. Yeah, uh, Mary, you know that I don't have any money, and the cop took my ten dollars. I... what am I gonna do? Can I use the phone now? Uh, if you give me a dime, sure. All I've got is one dime. Then you can't use the phone. Sorry. <laughs> but, uh, Mary! Mary, I don't know what to tell uh, you. I... Good news, uh, Miss Franklin. I talked with Officer Loomis. He's gonna drop that bribery charge against uh, you. Oh, 
Uh, you're free to go home now. Oh. And uh, here's your uh, $10 back. Oh, thank you. Officer Crane, really, I'm sorry if I said anything against the force before. And listen, if you want me to sign that autograph for your wife, I I'd be glad to. Oh, uh, I called my wife before to tell her I was arresting you. Yes. Uh, you're not the Franklin she likes. It's Aretha Franklin. <laughs> All right, Bonnie, you're free. Go call Harry. Harry, I'm not going to leave you here alone. But we have to tell him where we are. Can I use the phone now? No! Thank you. See if we can get change for the tent. Oh, all right. Fellow prisoners, victims of injustice, innocent dupes of the criminal Bonnie, court. would not just ask for the change? Right. Anybody have change of a ten dollar bill? Give me that. I will give this ten dollar bill to anyone in exchange for one thin dime. Huh? It's okay, it's good. Know what I'm taking for my cold? Harry's sinus medicine, Tristan tablets, and it works. If it's powerful enough to clear my sinuses... It's powerful enough for my cold. Tristan does more for cold miseries than the leading cold remedy. Look, Tristan's daily dose gives you more strength to drain congestion, dry runny nose, plus extra medicine to relieve aches and fever. The leading cold remedy has none. That's why Dristan's my sinus medicine. My cold medicine. Dristan, the powerful one for sinuses and colds. You're probably still asleep when I'm out exercising these thoroughbreds. My morning goes so fast, I can't always take time for a regular breakfast. But I have a good one. Carnation Instant Breakfast. Mixed with milk, it gives me all the nutrition of this bacon and egg meal in just seconds. In a hurry? Don't worry. With Carnation Instant Breakfast, you can always have a good breakfast. Chef's Blend. Chef's Blend. Chef's Blend. Chef's Blend. Chef's Blend. Chef's Blend dry cat food has four tasty flavors. Beef, cheese, tuna, liver. Chef's Blend. Try Chef's Blend, the four-course dinner with the gourmet taste. Try Chef's Blend. Are you ready? Everybody give me one and two. One and two. That reminds me of a very funny story. Listen. <laughs> two fellows meet one and say, you look bad. What's the matter with you? He said, I lost three wives in the last three months. What happened? My first wife died from eating poison mushrooms. What happened to your second wife? She died from eating poison mushrooms. What happened to your third wife? Fractured skull. How come? She wouldn't eat the... <laughs> I love this crowd. Right, here we are. Are you ready? They called me last week. They said, how much do you want to do a picture with Para Fawcett? I said, $50,000. They called back. They said, how about $20,000? I said, I'll pay it. <laughs> she dressed in one room. I dressed in the next room. There was a little hole in the wall. I let her look. <laughs> In Israel, a fellow drives up to the cop. Can I park here? He says, no. How about these other cars? They didn't ask. <laughs> you want to cause a riot, walk in the foreign restaurant, go in the kitchen and holler, Immigration! <laughs> Two dumb guys walking along. One says, Look at a dead bird. He says, Where? Where? <laughs> <laughs> Hilton Burl got a movie out here. He's supposed to play the part of a, a terrorist. And he was supposed to blow up a car. He burned his lips on the exhaust pipe. <laughs> Want to get a guy crazy? Send him a telegram saying, "Ignore first wire." <laughs> I 
And in the words of Alexander Graham Bell, who said to his wife in bed on his wedding night, what do you mean my three minutes are up? <laughs> How long before the crew goes on double time? Well, they settle for, a, for another dinner break. They're not hungry. Okay, Quinn, thanks. I'll call you when she gets here. Right. If she gets here. <laughs> He's really enjoying it, isn't he? Oh, yes, sir. Wann traf ich denn Fräulein McKinnon? Schimmel would like to know when you will meet Miss McKinnon. Uh, 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 tell him I don't know. You're the producer and you don't know? Right. What kind of producer are you? Are you talking to him or for you? Wait a minute, I'll ask him. Hey. What'd you find out? Harry, I checked the emergency hospital. I got bad news. Oh, my God. What? We're not there. Are you positive? Harry, I asked for them both by name. I asked for Little Bo Peep and Little Red Riding Hood. <laughs> They did have a Daffy Duck, but they took him to the rubber room. Well, I'm gonna be in the rubber room with Daffy if we don't start the show by 7.30. Harry, I checked with the police. They say they're not missing until they've been missing for 24 hours. Well, that makes sense. But I don't think Henny got, got that much material. <laughs> it's only talk slow. Hello. Mary. What? Where are you? Yeah. What yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. You got it. Where is she? They're in jail. Jail? Kenny, Kenny, I'll tell you later. Here's a hundred dollars. Go down to the county courthouse and bail them out. You know where the county courthouse is? Oh, I know where the courthouse is. Figures, get going. I swear to you, Your Honor, the traffic light was yellow when I went through it. All right, I'm going to believe you this time and let you off with a warning. Oh, thank you, Your Honor. Now, don't ever let me see you in this court again. Case dismissed. Women drivers. <laughs> been here with the money by now. Oh, Mary, we don't need money. We have Wright on our side. I know, Bonnie, but if Wright doesn't work, I'd like to have the money. Call the next case, please. State of California versus Mary McKinnon. I'm against the whole state of California. No, it's a term they use. Come on. Mary McKinnon. Is that your true name? Yes, 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 sir, it is. You have an outstanding traffic citation. Parking too close to a hydrant. How do you plead? Not Honor, we demand a jury trial. Bonnie, please. Are you Mary McKinnon? No, I'm Bonnie Franklin, but I represent Miss McKinnon. And, Your Honor, this is a case of mistaken identity. Are you an attorney? No, I'm not an attorney, but I was in an episode of The Law with Judd Hirsch. <laughs> Bonnie, please. What are you talking about? Television. Your Honor, I, I'm an actress, and, of course, so is Miss McKinnon. We're on television every week, both of us. Miss uh, Franklin, is yes. it? Yes, Miss Franklin. Frank I am a night court judge. I do not watch television in court. Oh, yes, but Mary's on in the afternoons. There are reruns and reruns. Right, Bonnie, Bonnie, never mind. Your Honor, we have to tape a show in a half an hour. And it's awfully important to all the people concerned. So if my attorney doesn't mind, I would just like to get this over as quickly as possible. All right, since time is a problem, you can plead guilty. Guilty. Sell out. Fine will be $50. You may pay the court clerk and go. Well, um, see, I don't have the $50. Then I have no choice but to remand you to the custody of the sheriff. Ah, uh, Your Honor, that is ridiculous. Miss McKinnon was out of town the date that ticket was issued. No doubt she was visiting her grandmother, huh? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> cute. Your Honor, there was another person driving that car. He was the one who got the ticket. And didn't pay it. Right. The owner of the motor vehicle is responsible in this state. That's not fair. I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. I am the judge of that. Look, Your Honor, we are citizens, and we were brought here, and we were treated like common criminals. Now, I... Hold it. If you feel that you've been treated unfairly, you can change your plea to not guilty, and we'll set a trial date. What will get me out of here the quickest? Fifty dollars will get you out. Guilty. Not guilty. <laughs> guilty. Now, now, look, what is it going to be? Is it guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Not guilty. <laughs> I'm not authority. Keep you around, Mary. 
Honey, it's already kicked me around, and we have a show to do. Oh, Your Honor, we... You guys got yourself in a wacky situation here, huh? Well, Kenny, will you just give me the money to pay the fine? Wait a minute, Mary. You're crazy to plead guilty. No one's gonna hire an actress with a record. Listen to me. You plead temporary insanity, Mary. Kenny, give me the money, or I will tell the judge who it was who parked the car illegally in front of the fire hydrant. Guilty. No, no, no. Pay the clerk, please. Ah, uh, Mary, next time we jaywalk, we carry ID, money, and every woman's guide to the law. Better idea. Next time we jaywalk, we do it in a crosswalk. <laughs> hey, Mary, can you kind of hurry up? I got your car parked in a bus stop. <laughs> This side of the medicine chest is mine. It has a lot of things for a cold that can relieve nasal and sinus congestion, sneezing, aches, pains, fever. Well, my side does more because I've got Comtrex, the new multi-symptom cold reliever. Comtrex even relieves your cough. So all by itself, it gives more kinds of relief than Dristan or Contact or Bayer. For your miserable combination of all these symptoms, this is better. New Comtrex in tablet or liquid. There's big news when it comes to satisfying your family's hearty appetites. New Hungry Jack! It's these new recipe Hungry Jack flaky biscuits. New to bake up flakier, more delicious. And just look at all those layers. They'll satisfy your family's hearty appetites more than ever. New flakier and tastier Hungry Jack biscuits. Hungry, Hungry Jack. Flakier and tastier, the plate comes back for Hungry Jack. Where are my cufflinks? Sweetheart, I can't, I, I can't find my tie. Oh. Relax, I canceled the reservation. But it's our anniversary. I know, and tonight I want you all to myself. Now you should know about Engelnook, America's superior wine. Very appropriate for those moments in life that are somehow just a little special. Remember Engelnook when the toast is from your heart. Here's to the way you love me. Tell them when we opened up the drawer. What do you think I found in the drawer? Tony Bennett's heart. Guard gate, please. Hello, this is Harry Sinclair. Look, has Mary McKinnon shown up yet? She's here. Harry. Where? We're here. She's here. Hello. You won't believe. Look, we tell me about it later. Where Get ready for your number. The men from Germany are here. Oh. Oh. Uh. Okay. Yes, yes he's on. No, no, no. Later, uh, later, later, later. Uh, Harry. Harry. Take my wife, please. <laughs> I gotta go now, folks. I gotta get some sleep tonight. I had a nightmare last night. I dreamt that Dolly Parton was my mother and I was a bottle baby. <laughs> hey, that was terrific. I'll never be that good on the show. Sure, you will, because you're great. Look, we only have an hour to tape the show. You better get ready, because you go on right after that number. Oh, oh, All right. Oh, oh. Ladies and gentlemen, Mary McKinnon and her guest, Bonnie Franklin. Fairy tales can come true. It can happen to you if you're young at heart. For it's hard, you will find, to be narrow of mind if you're young.
something to say about that. Since I get no wool, I gotta wear less. But watching those tails wag was a great big drag. So to tell the truth, I couldn't care less. They are poor little lambs who have lost their way. They're little lost sheep who have gone astray. I want you to meet Mr. Schimmel. I'm you too, Bonnie. Come uh, on. Mary, Come on, I buddy. hope you, you remember your speech. I hope. You okay. You're better. This could mean a lot of Deutsch. <laughs> Mr. Schimmel, uh, I'd like you to meet uh, Bonnie Franklin. Uh, uh, hi. And Mary McKinnon. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, S.C. Sign. Uh, Feg Newton. Uh, <laughs> you're off. Uh, uh, can I get it? Oh, the heck with it. Would you just tell Herr Schimmel that we hope he has a wonderful time in our country. Thank you. I am glad to be here. <laughs> you can understand English. Why do you need a translator? Thank you. I am glad to be here. <laughs> That's all he memorized. <laughs> <laughs> Look, would you ask him how he's liked what he's seen so far? Wie hat es Ihnen so weit gefallen? Wunderbar, wunderbar. Ah, that is wonderful. <laughs> I think we got him, Mary. Then he uh, intends to buy our show for Germany. Dann werden Sie die Serie für Deutschland kaufen? Nein. <gasps> That means, uh, no, I know, I know. Uh, well, he just said wunderbar. Uh, nein, McKinnon, uh, wunderbar Jungmann. He wants to buy any Jungmann. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Name Sie meine Frau, bitte. He says, take my wife. We yeah, know. We know. Uh, <laughs> Bronson. I'm equipped. The angriest man in the West joins a warrior from the Far East, and their enemies come in every number and every shape. Ursula Andres is the woman Bronson deals with. Red Sun. The CBS Tuesday night movies at 9, 8 Central and Mountain. Myself. It's the first time I've, I've ever done 30 minutes of warm up and three minutes of show. Uh, well, I gotta leave now. Wait, 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 what's your hurry? I gotta fly to Germany. I don't really want to fly to Germany, but I'm just following orders. <laughs> Goodbye, Henny. Good night, darling. Nice to see you. Good night. Good night. It's a pleasure to work with you two girls. Oh, Goodbye. Thank you. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye Henny. Oh. <laughs> oh, boy. What a night. Mm -hmm. I'm really sorry about all the trouble. Hey, what's a few gray hairs? 
God, if I only had a few gray hairs. <laughs> Me too. Let's hey, eat. Look, I know this great Italian restaurant. Get your coats. We'll go. Okay, but only if it's on this side of the street. I'm not crossing any more streets again, ever. <laughs> you girls are going to love this place. They serve ex-cons. Oh, oh, you're adorable. You. you know that. Hey, Mary, I'm sorry you didn't sell the show to the Germans. Yeah, me too. And after I put in all that time on that dumb speech. Mm -hmm. Might come in handy in case he comes back next year. Yeah. And if he does, I know exactly what I'm going to say. I'm going to say, a fellow walks into a psychiatrist's office, says, Doctor, I got a problem. No one pays attention to me. The doctor says, next. My uncle is so fat, he gets on a scale, a card comes out, says, one at a time, please. Take it, please. Take my husband, please. But I love this friend. Also appearing on tonight's show were Al Checo, Ed Peck, Pete Keith. Robert Costanzo, Peter Lee, Sky Wolf, Eric Holmes, Paris Buckner, Gerald Catter, Randall Edwards, Fred Gordon, Steve Dort, and Chris Wallace. We've got a great lineup for you Wednesday evening, beginning with Married. The first year at 8, 7 Central and Mountain, followed by two grandmothers with their own party ideas for Barbara on One Day at a Time. Then, share nonstop laughs with Florence as she spins some stories for her doctor on the Jeffersons. And to cap it off, on Kaz, desperate parents kidnap their own daughter from a religious commune.